Act two. If the great gods be just, they shall assist the deeds of justest men. No, worthy Pompey, that what they do delay, they not deny. Whilst we are suitors to their throne, decays the thing we sue for. We, ignorant of ourselves, beg often our own harms, which the wise powers deny us for our good. So find we profit by losing our prayers. I shall do well. The people love me, and the sea is mine. My powers are crescent, and my auguring hope says it will come to the full. Mia Antony in Egypt sits at dinner, and will make no wars without doors. Caesar gets money where he loses hearts. Lepid as flat as both, of both is flattered. But he neither loves, nor either cares for him. Caesar and Lepidus are in the field. A mighty strength they carry. Where have you this? Tis false. From Silvius, sir. He dreams. I know they are in Rome together, looking for Antony. But all the charms of love, salt Cleopatra, soften thy waned lip. Let witchcraft join with beauty, lust with both. Tie up the libertine in a field of feasts, keep her brain fuming. Epicurean cook, sharpen with cloyless sauce her appetite. That sleep and feeding may prorogue her honour, even till a lethe dullness. How now, Varius? This is most certain that I shall deliver. Mia Anthony is every hour in Rome expected. Since she went from Egypt, tis a space for further travel. I could have given less matter a better ear. Menace, I did not think this amorous surfeiter would have donned her helm for such a petty war. Her soldiership is twice the other twain. But let us rear the higher our opinion, that our stirring can from the lap of Egypt's widow pluck the near lust wearied Antonia. I cannot hope Caesar and Antony shall well greet each other. Her wife that's dead did trespasses to Caesar. Her brother warred upon him, although I think not moved by Antony. I know not, Menas, how lesser enmities may give way to greater. Were it not that we stand up against them all, to a pregnant they should square between themselves, for they have entertained cause enough to draw their swords. But how the fear of us may cement their divisions and bind up the petty difference, we yet not know. Be it as our gods will have it. It only stands our lives upon to use our strongest hands. Come, Menas. Good Enobarbus, tis a worthy deed and shall become you well to entreat your captain to soft and gentle speech. I shall entreat her to answer, like herself. If Caesar move her, let Antony look over Caesar's head and speak as loud as Mars. By Jupiter, were I the wearer of Antonia's locks, I would not shave it today. Tis not a time for private stomaching. Every time serves for the matter that is born in it. But small to greater matters must give way. Not if the small come first. Your speech is passion, but pray you stir no embers up. Here comes the noble Antony. And yonder, Caesar. If we compose well here to Parthia. Hark, Ventidius. I do not know, Messenus. Ask Agrippa. Noble friends, that which combined us was most great, and let not a leaner action rend us. What's amiss, may it be gently heard. When we debate our trivial difference loud, we do commit murder and healing wounds. Then, noble partners, the rather, for I earnestly beseech, touch you the sourest points with sweetest terms, nor curseness grow to the matter. Tis spoken well, were we before our armies and to fight. I should do thus. Welcome to Rome. Thank you. Sit. Sit, sir. Nay, then. I learn you take things ill which are not so, or being concern you not. I must be laughed at, if, or for nothing or little, 
I should say myself offended, and with you chiefly in the world. More laughed at that I should once name you derogatively, when to sound your name it not concerned me. My being in Egypt, Caesar, what was it to you? No more than my residing here at Rome might be to you in Egypt. Yet, if you there did practice on my state, your being in Egypt might be my question. How intend you practiced? You may be pleased to catch mine intent by what did here befall me. Your wife and brother made wars upon me, and their contestation was theme for you. You were the word of war. You do mistake your business. My brother never did urge me in his act. I did inquire it, and have my learning from some true reports that drew their swords with you. Did he not rather discredit my authority with yours, and make the wars alike against my stomach, having alike your cause? Of this, my letters before did satisfy you. If you'll patch a quarrel, as matter whole you have not to make it with, it must not be with this. You praise yourself by laying defects of judgment to me, but you patched up your excuses. Not so, not so. I know you could not lack, I am certain on it, very necessity of this thought that I, your partner in the cause against which he fought, could not with graceful eyes attend those wars which fronted mine own peace. As for my wife, I would you had her spirit in such another. The third of the world is yours, which with a snaffle you may pace easy, but not such a wife. <laughs> Would we all had such wives that the men might go to wars with the women? So much uncurbable. Her garboils made out of her impatience, which not wanted shrewdness of policy too. I grieve and grant that you too much disquiet. For that you must but say, I could not help it. I wrote to you when rioting in Alexandria. You did pocket up my letters, and with taunts did jibe my missive out of audience. Sir, he fell upon me ere admitted. Then three kings I had newly feasted, and did want of what I was in the morning. But next day, I told him of myself, which was as much as to have asked him pardon. Let this fellow be nothing of our strife. If we contend, out of our question wipe him. You have broken the article of your oath which you shall never have tongue to charge me with. Soft, Caesar. No, Lepidus. Let him speak. The honor is sacred which he talks on now, supposing that I lacked it. But on, Caesar, the article of my oath. To lend me arms and aid when I required them, the which you both denied. Neglected, rather. And then when poisoned hours had bound me up from mine own knowledge. As nearly as I may, I'll play the penitent to you. But mine honesty shall not make poor my greatness, nor my power work without it. Truth is that Fulvia, to have me out of Egypt, made wars here, for which myself the ignorant motive. Do so far as pardon as befits mine honor to soup in such a case. Tis noble spoken. If it might please you, to enforce no further the griefs between you. To forget them quite were to remember that the present need speaks to atone you. Worthily spoken, Messenus. Or, if you borrow one another's love for the instant, you may, when you hear no more words of Pompeii, return it again. You shall have time to wrangle in when you have nothing else to do. Thou art a soldier only. Speak no more. That truth should be silent? <laughs> I had almost forgot. You wrong this presence. Therefore, speak no more. Go to, then, your considered stone. I do not much dislike the matter, but the manner of his speech. For it cannot be we shall remain in friendship, our conditions so differing in their acts. Yet if I knew what hoop should hold us staunch, from edge to edge of the world, I would pursue it. Give me leave, Caesar. Speak, Agrippa. Thou hast a brother by the mother's side, admired Otto. Great Mia Antony is now a widow. Say not so, Agrippa. If Cleopatra heard you, your reproof were well deserved of rashness. 
I am not married, Caesar. Let me hear Agrippa further speak. To hold you in perpetual amity, to make you siblings, and to knit your hearts with an unslipping knot, take Antony Otto to her husband, whose handsomeness claims no worse a wife than the best of women, whose virtue and whose general graces speak that which none else can utter. By this marriage, all little jealousies which now seem great, and all great fears which now import their dangers, would then be nothing. Truths would be tales, for now half tales be truths. His love to both would, each to each other, and all loves to both, draw after him. Pardon what I have spoke, for tis a studied, not a present thought by duty ruminated. Will Caesar speak? Not till he hears how Antony is touched with what is spoke already. What power is in Agrippa? If I would say, Agrippa, be it so, to make this good. The power of Caesar and his power unto Otto. May I never to this good purpose that so fairly shows dream of impediment. Let me have thy hand. Further this act of grace. And from this hour, the heart of siblings govern in our loves and sway our great designs. There is my hand. A brother I bequeath you, whom no brother did ever love so dearly. Let him live to join our kingdoms and our hearts, and never fly off our loves again. Happily, amen. I did not think to draw my sword against Pompey, for he hath laid strange courtesies and great of late upon me. I must thank him only, lest my remembrance suffer ill report. At heel of that, defy him. Time calls upon us. Of us Pompey must presently be sought, or else he seeks out us. Where lies he? About the Mount Mycenaeum. What is his strength by land? Great and increasing, but by sea he is an absolute master. So is the fame. Would we had spoke together. Haste we for it. Yet, ere we put ourselves in arms, dispatch we the business we have talked of. With most gladness, and do invite you to my brother's view, whither straight I'll lead you. Let us, Lepidus, not lack your company. Noble Antony, not sickness should detain me. Welcome from Egypt, sir. Half the heart of Caesar, worthy Messenius, my honorable friend, Agrippa. God, you know, Barbus. We have cause to be glad that matters are so well digested. You stayed well by it in Egypt. Aye, sir. We did sleep day out of continence, and made the night alight with drinking. Eight wild boars roasted whole at a breakfast, and but twelve persons there. Is this true? This was but a fly by an eagle. We had much more monstrous matter of feast, which worthily deserved noting. She's a most triumphant lady, if reports be square to her. When she first met Mia Antony, she pursed up her heart upon the river Sidonus. There she appeared indeed, or my reporter devised well for her. I will tell you. The barge she sat in, like a burnished throne, burned on the water. The poop was beaten gold, purple the sails, and so perfumed that the winds were lovesick with them. The oars were silver, which to the tune of flutes kept stroke, and made the water which they beat to follow faster, as amorous of their strokes. For her own person, it beggared all description. She did lie in her pavilion, a cloth of gold or tissue, or picturing that Venus, where we see the fancy outwork of nature. On each side of her stood pretty, dimpled boys, like smiling cupids, with divers' colored fans, whose wind it seemed to glow the delicate cheeks which they did cool, and what they undid, did. Oh, rare for Antony! A gentlewoman, like the Nereides, so many mermaids, tended her in the eyes, and made their bends adornings. At the helm, a seeming mermaid steers, the silken tackle swell with the touches of those flower-soft hands that yearly frame the office. From the barge, a strange invisible perfume hits the sense of the adjacent wharfs. The city cast her people out upon her, and Antony enthroned in, 
the marketplace did sit alone, whistling to the air, which but for vacancy had gone to gaze upon Cleopatra too, and made a gap in nature. Rare Egyptian! Upon her landing, Antony sent to her, invited her to supper. <laughs> she replied, it should be better she became her guest, which she entreated. Ah, courteous Antony, who never the word of no woman heard speak, being barbered ten times over, going to the feast, and for her ordinary, pays her heart for what her eyes eat only. Royal wench! She made great Caesar lay his sword to bed. He plowed her, and she cropped. I saw her once, up forty paces through the public street, and having lost her breath, she spoke and panted that she did make defect perfection, and breathless power breathe forth. Now Antonia must leave her utterly. Never. She will not. Age cannot wither her, nor custom stale her. Infinite variety. Other women cloy the appetites they feed, but she makes hungry, where most she satisfies. For vilest things become themselves in her. But the holy priests bless her when she is riggish. If beauty, wisdom, modesty can settle the heart of Antonia, Otto is a blessed lottery to her. Let us go. Good evening, Barbus. Make yourself my guest whilst you abide here. Humbly, sir, I thank you. The world and my great office will sometimes divide me from your bosom. All which time before the gods, my knee shall bow my prayers to them for you. Good night, sir. My Otto, read not my blemishes in the world's report. I have not kept my square, but that too come shall all be done by the rule. Good night, dear lord. Good night, sir. Good night. Now, Sirrah, you do wish yourself in Egypt? <sighs> Would I had never come from thence, nor you thither. If you can, your reason. I see it in my motion, have it not in my tongue, but yet hie you to Egypt again. Say to me, whose fortunes shall rise higher, Caesar's or mine? Uh, Caesar's. Therefore, O Antonia, stay not by his side. Thy demon, that's thy spirit which keeps thee, is noble, courageous high, unmatchable, where Caesar's is not. But near him, thy angel becomes a fear as being overpowered. Therefore, make space enough between you. Speak this no more. To none but thee. No more but when to thee. If thou dost play with him at any game, thou art sure to lose. And of that natural luck, he beats thee against the odds. Thy luster thickens when he shines by. I say again, thy spirit is all afraid to govern thee near him. But, he away, tis noble. Get thee gone. Say to Ventidius I would speak with him. He shall to Parthia. Be it art or hap, he hath spoken true. The very dice obey him. And in our sports, my better cunning faints under his chance. If we draw lots, he speeds. His cocks do win the battle still of mine, when it is all to naught. And his quails ever beat mine in hooped at odds. I will to Egypt. And though I make this marriage for my peace, in the east my pleasure lies. Oh, come. Ventidius, you must to Parthia. Your commission's ready. Follow me and receive it. Trouble yourselves no further. Pray you hasten your generals after. Sir. 
Mia Anthony or Ian but kiss Otto, and we'll follow. Till I shall see you in your soldier's dress, which will become you both. Farewell. We shall, as I conceive the journey, be at the mount before you, Lepidus. Your way is shorter. My purposes do draw me much about. You'll win two days upon me. Sir, good success. Sir, good success. Farewell. Give me some music. Music, moody food of us that trade in love. The music, ho! Let it alone. Let's to billiards. Come, come in. Mm, my arm is sore. Let's play with Mardian. As well a woman with a eunuch played as well with a woman. Come, you'll play with me, sir. As well as I can, madam. And when goodwill is showed, though it come too short, the actor may plead pardon. I'll none now. Give me mine angle, will to the river. There, my music playing far off, I will betray tawny finned fishes. My bent hook shall pierce their slimy jaws. And as I draw them up, I'll think them every one an Antony and say, Aha! Your cart. Twas merry when you wagered on your angling, when your diver did hang a salt fish on his hook, which he with fervency drew up. That time, oh times, I laughed her out of patience, and that night I laughed her into patience, and next morn, ere the ninth hour, I drunk her to her bed, then put my tires and mantles on her, Whilst I wore her sword, Philippian. Oh, from Italy ram thou thy fruitful tidings in mine ears that long time have been barren. Madam, madam. Antonia dead? If thou say so, villain, thou killest thy mistress. But well and free. If thou so yield her, there is gold. And hear my bluest veins to kiss, a hand that kings have laid, and trembled kissing. First, madam, she is well. Why, there's more gold. But, Sarah, mark, we used to say the dead are well. Bring it to that. The gold I give thee will I melt and pour down thy ill uttering throat. Good madam. Hear me. Well, go to. I will. But there's no goodness in thy face. If Antony be free and helpful, so tart a favor to trumpet such good tidings. If not well, thou shouldst come like a fury crowned with snakes, not like a formal man. Will it please you hear me? I have a mind to strike the air thou speakest. Yet, if thou say Antony lives, is well, the friends with Caesar, or not captive to him, I'll set thee in a shower of gold, and hail rich pearls upon thee. Madam, she's well. Well said. And friends with Caesar. Thou'rt an honest woman. Caesar and she are greater friends than ever. Make thee a fortune from me. But yet, madam... I do not like but yet. It does allay the good precedence. Fie upon but yet. But yet is as a gailer to bring forth some monstrous malefactor. Prithee, friend, pour out the pact of matter to mine ear. The good and bad together. She's friends with Caesar. In state of health thou sayest, and thou sayest free. Free, madam? No. I made no such report. She's bound unto Otto. For what good turn? For the best turn in the bed? I am pale, Carmian. Madam, she's married to Otto. The most infectious pestilence upon thee! Good madam, patience! What say you? Hets, horrible villain! 
or I'll spurn thine eyes like balls before me. I'll unhair thy head. Thou shalt be whipped with wire and stewed in brine, smarting in lingering pickle. Gracious madam, I bet you bring the news made, not the match. Say tis not so. A province I will give thee and make thy fortunes proud. The blow thou hadst shall make thy peace for moving me to rage, and I will boot thee with what gift beside thy modesty can beg. She is married, madam. Rogue, thou hast lived too long. Oh. Good madam, keep yourself within yourself. The man is innocent. Some innocents escape not the thunderbolt. Melt Egypt into Nile, and kindly creatures turn all to serpents. Call the slave again. Though I am mad, I will not bite her. Call. She is afeard to come. I... I will not hurt her. These hands do lack nobility, that they strike a meaner than myself, since I myself have given myself the cause. Come hither, sir. Though it be honest, it is never good to bring bad news. Give to a gracious message, a host of tongues. But let ill tidings tell themselves when they be felt. I have done my duty. Is she married? I cannot hate thee worse than I do if thou again say yes. Yes, she's married, madam. The gods confound thee! Dost thou hold there still? Should I lie, madam? Oh, I would thou didst so half my Egypt was submerged and made a cistern for scalded snakes. Go, get thee hence. Hadst thou Narcissus in thy face, to me thou wouldst appear most ugly. She is married. I crave your highness's pardon. She is married? Take no offense that I would not offend you. To punish me for what you make me do seems much unequal. She is married to Otto. Oh, that her fault should make a knave of thee, thou art not what thou art sure of. Get thee hence. The merchandise which thou hast brought from Rome are all too dear for me. Lie they upon thy hand, and be undone by them. Good, your highness, patience. In praising Antony, I have dispraised Caesar. Many times, madam. I am paid for it now. Lead me from hence, I faint. Oh, Iris, call me in. Tis no matter. Go to the fellow, good Alexis. Bid him report the feature of Otto, his years, his inclination. Let him not leave out the color of his hair. Bring me word quickly. Let her forever go. Let her not. Come here. Though she be painted one way like a gorgon, the other way is a Mars. Bid you, Alexis, bring me word how tall he is. Pity me, Carmia, but do not speak to me. Lead me to my chamber. Your hostages I have, so have you mine, and we shall talk before we fight. Most meet that first we come to words, and therefore have we our written purposes before us sent, which, if thou hast considered, let us know if t'will tie up thy discontented sword, and carry back to Sicily much tall youth that else must perish here. To you all three, the senators alone of this great world, chief factors for the gods, I do not know wherefore my father should revenges want, having a son and friends. 
since Julius Caesar, who at Philippi the good Brutus ghosted, there saw you laboring for him. What was that moved pale Cassius to conspire? And what made the all-honored, honest Roman Brutus, with the armed rest, courtiers and beauteous freedom, to drench the capital? But that they would have one man, but a man. And that is it hath made me rig my navy, at whose burden this angered ocean foams, with which I meant to scourge the ingratitude that despiteful Rome cast on my father. Take your time. Thou canst not fear us, Pompey, with thy sails. We'll speak with thee at sea. At land, thou knowest how much we do overcount thee. At land, indeed. Thou dost overcount me of my father's house. But since the cuckoo builds not for himself, remain in it as thou mayst. Be pleased to tell us, for this is from the present, how you take the offer we have sent you. There's the point. Which do not be entreated to, but weigh what it is worth embraced. And what may follow, to try a larger fortune. You have made me offer of Sicily, Sardinia, and I must rid all the sea of pirates, then to send measures of wheat to Rome, and this greed upon to part with unhacked edges and bear back our targes undinted. That is our offer. offer. Know then, I came before you here, a man prepared to take this offer. But Mia Antony put me to some impatience. Though I lose the praise of it by telling, you must know. When Caesar and your brother were at blows, your mother came to Sicily, and did find her welcome friendly. I have heard it, Pompey, and am well studied for liberal thanks which I do owe you. Let me have your hand. I did not think, sir, to have met you here. The beds in the east are soft, and thanks to you that called me timelier than my purpose hither. For I have gained by it. Since I saw you last, there is a change upon you. Well, I know not what Count's harsh fortune casts upon my face, but in my bosom shall she never come, to make my heart her vassal. Well met here. I hope so, Lepidus. Thus we are agreed. I crave our composition may be written and sealed between us. That's the next to do. We'll feast each other ere we part. And let's draw lots. Who shall begin? That will I, Pompey. No, Antony, take the lot. But, first or last, your fine Egyptian cookery shall have the fame. I have heard that Julius Caesar grew fat with feasting there. You have heard much. I have fair meaning, sir. And fair words to them. Then so much have I heard. And I have heard Apollodorus carried- No more of that. He did so. What, I pray you? A certain queen to Caesar in a mattress. I know thee now. How farest thou, soldier? Well. And well I'm like to do, for I perceive four feasts are toward. Let me shake thy hand. I never hated thee. I have seen thee fight when I have envied thy behavior. Sir, I've never loved you much, but I have praised ye when you have well deserved ten times as much as I have said ye did. <laughs> Enjoy thy plainness, it nothing ill becomes thee. Aboard my galley I invite you all. Will you lead, lords? Show, show us, us the, the way, way sir. Yes, sir. show us the way. Come. Thy father, Pompey, would ne'er have made this treaty. You and I have known, sir? At sea, I think. We have, sir. You have done well by water. And you by land. I will praise any man that will praise me. Though it cannot be denied what I have done by land. Nor what I have done by water. Yes, something you can deny for your own safety. You have been a great thief by sea. <laughs> and you by land. There, I deny my land service. But give me your hand, Minas. If our eyes had authority... Here, they might take two thieves kissing. All men's faces are true. Whatsoe'er their hands are. But there is never a fair woman has a true face. No, slander. They steal hearts. We came hither to fight with you. For my part, I am sorry it is turned to a drinking. Pompey doth this day laugh away his fortune. If he do, sure he cannot weep it back again. 
You've said, sir. We look not for mere Anthony here. Pray you, is she married to Cleopatra? Caesar's brother is called Otto. True, sir. He was the husband of Caia Marcella. But he is now the husband of Miana Antonia. Pray ye, sir. Tis true. Then is Caesar and she forever knit together? <laughs> if I were bound to divine of this unity, I would not prophesy so. I think the policy of that purpose made more in the marriage than the love of the parties. I think so too. But you shall find the band that seems to tie the friendship together will be the very strangler of their amity. Otto is of a holy, cold, and still conversation. Who would not have their espoused so? Not she that herself is not so, which is Mia Antony. She will to her Egyptian dish again. Then shall the size of Otto blow the fire up in Caesar. And as I said before, that which is the strength of their amity shall prove the immediate author of their variance. Antonia will use her affection where it is. She married, but her occasion here. And thus it may be. Come, sir, will you aboard? I have a health for you. I shall take it, sir. We have used our throats in Egypt. Come, let's away. Oh, their plans are ill-rooted already. The least wind I, the world will blow them down. Lepidus is high-colored. They have made him drink alms drink. As they pinch one another by the disposition, he cries out, no more, reconciles them to his entreaty and himself to the drink. But it raises the greater war between him and his discretion. Why, this is to have a name in great men's fellowship. I had as lief have a reed that will do me no service as a partisan I could not heave. To be called into a huge sphere and not be seen to move it are the holes where I should be, which pitiful disaster the cheeks. Thus do they, sir. They take the flow of the Nile by certain scales in the pyramid. They know by the height, the lowness, or the mean if dearth or poison follow. The higher Nihilus swells, the more it promises. As it ebbs, the seedsman upon the slime and ooze scatters his grain and shortly comes to harvest. You strange serpents there? Aye, Lepidus. Your serpent of Egypt is bred now of your mud by the operation of your son. So is your crocodile. <laughs> they are so. Sit, and some wine! A health to Lepidus! I am not so well as I should be, but I'll narrow out. Not till you have slept. I fear me you'll be in till then. Nay, certainly. I have heard the Ptolemy's Pyramuses are very goodly things. Without contradiction, I have heard that. Pompey, a word? Say in mine ear, what is? Forsake thy seat. I do beseech thee, Captain, and hear me speak a word. Forbear me till anon. This wine for Lepidus! What manner of thing is your crocodile? It is shaped, sir, like itself and it is as broad as it hath breath. It is just so high as it is and moves with its own organs. It lives by that which nursed it, and the elements once out of it, it transmigrates. What color is it of? Of its own color, too. Tis a strange serpent. Tis so, and the tears of it are wet. Will this description satisfy him? <laughs> with the health that Pompey gives him, Else he is a very epicure. Go hang, sir. Hang. Tell me of that. Away. Do as I bid you. Where's this cup I called for? If for the sake of merit thou wilt hear me, rise from thy stool. I think thou'rt mad. The matter? I have ever held my cap off to thy fortunes. Thou hast served me with much faith. What's else to say? 
Be jolly, lords. These quicksands, Lepidus, keep off them, for you sink. Wilt thou be lord of all the world? What sayst thou? Wilt thou be the lord of the whole world? That's twice. How should that be? But entertain it. And though thou think me poor, I am the man will give thee all the world. Hast thou drunk well? Now, Pompey, I have kept me from the cup. Thou art, if thou darest be, the earthly Jove. Whate'er the ocean pales or sky in clips is thine, if thou wilt have it. Show me which way. These three world sharers, these competitors, are in thy vessel. Let me cut the cable, and when we are put off, fall to their throats. All there is thine. This thou shouldst have done, and not have spoke on it. In me tis villainy, in thee it had been good service. Thou must know, tis not my profit that does lead mine honour, mine honour it. Repent that ere thy tongue hath so betrayed thine act, being done unknown, I should have found it afterwards well done. But must condemn it now. Desist and drink. For this, I'll never follow thy pulled fortunes more. Who seeks and will not take when once tis offered shall never find it more. This health to Lepidus! Hey. Bear him ashore. I'll pledge it for him, Pompey. Here's to thee, Minas. And a barbus. Welcome. Feel till the cup be hid. There's a strong fellow, Minas. Who's the happy drunk? Why? Aye, there's a third part of the world, man. Seest not? The third part, then, is drunk. Would it were all that it mine corn wheels. Drink thou. Increase the reels. Come. This is not yet an Alexandrian feast. It ripens towards it. Strike the vessels, ho. Here is to Caesar. I could well forbear it. It's monstrous labor. When I wash my brain and it grows fouler. Be a child of the time. Ah, possess it. I'll make answer. But I'd rather fast from all four days than drink so much in one. (laughs) My brave emperor. Shall we dance now the Egyptian bacchanals and celebrate our drink? Let's have it, good soldier. Come, let's all take hands to let the conquering wine have steeped our sense in soft and delicate leaf. <laughs> I'll take hands, make battery to our ears with the loud music, the while I'll place you. Then the lady shall sing, the holding every man shall bear as loud as his strong sides can folly. Come, thou monarch of the vine, plumpy Bacchus with pink eye, in thy fats our cares be drowned, with thy grapes our hairs be crowned. Cup us till the world goes round, cup us till the world goes round. Cup us till the world goes around. Cup us till the world goes around. What would you more? Pompey, good night. Good brother, let me request you off. Our graver business frowns at this levity. Gentle lords, let's part. You see, we have burnt our cheeks. Strong Enobarb is weaker than the wine, and mine own tongue splits what it speaks. The wild disguise hath almost anticked us all. What needs more words? Good night. Good Antony, your hand. I'll try you on the shore. And shall, sir. Gives your hand. Oh, Antony, you have my father's house. But what? We are friends. Come, down into the boat. Take heed you fall not. Menace, I'll not on shore. No, to my cabin. These drums, these trumpets, flutes, what? Let Neptune hear we bid a loud farewell to these great fellows. Sound and be hanged. Sound out. (laughs) Ho, ho. Says, ah, there's my cap. Ho, noble captain, come.
The Pendant Shakespeare, also known as The Wild Bill Variety Show. Antony and Cleopatra, Act 2. Featuring the voice talents of Anna Rodriguez as Antony, Andrew Hackley as Domitius Enobarbus, Matthew Hawking as Pompey, Ricky Wright as Menace, Rachel Rimke as Cleopatra, Finn M.K. as Octavia Caesar, Aidan Rudd as Lepidus, Melissa Bartell as The Messenger, Michael Perger as Agrippa, Kyle Garrett as Messinus, Paige Tuline as Carmian, Amber Lee as The First Servant, Vincent Morrison as The Soothsayer, Rich Burgess as The Second Servant, Jeremiah McCoy as Menecrates, Eric Matthews as Varius, Amber Lee as Iris, Dave Morgan as Mardian, and Rich Burgess as Otto. Written by William Shakespeare. Adapted for audio by Landon Bell and Colin Kelly. Directed by Landon Bell. Assistant Director, Swen Halverson. Music by Zero Project of zero-project.gr. Additional music by the United States Army Band Pershing's Own the United States Army Old Guard Fife and Drum Corps, and Landon Bell of soundcloud.com slash Landon Bell, L-A-N-D-O-N-B-E-A-L-L. Produced by Pendant Productions. This production is copyright 2016, Pendant Productions. For more information, visit PendantAudio.com. Thanks for listening. Gentle Otto, let your best love draw to that point, which seeks best to preserve it. If I lose mine honor, I lose myself. Better I were not yours than you're so branchless. Next time, on The Pendant Shakespeare. Dear Majesty, Herod of Jewry dare not look upon you but when you are well pleased. That Herod's head I'll have. But how? When Antony is gone, from whom I might commend it. Good, my lord. To come thus was I not constrained, but did on my free will. My lady, Mia Antony, hearing that you prepared for war, acquainted my grieved ear with all, whereon I begged her pardon for return. Which soon she granted, being an obstruct between her lust and herself. Do not say so, my lord. I have eyes upon her, and her affairs come to me on the wind. All is fair in love and war, when Part 1 of Antony and Cleopatra, Act 3, premieres on March 16th, 2016. Welcome, dear sir. Each heart in Rome does love and pity you. Only their Duchess Antonia, most large in her abominations, turns you off and gives her potent regiment to a troll that noises it against us. Only at PendantAudio.com.